Grab your seats, everybody. Very excited about the word this morning. But, uh, but hey, Bob, what a uh, great encouragement. Thanks, mate. Thinking of the worship ministry, it's so powerful. Doesn't the Bible say whenever we lift Jesus up that He will uh, draw all people to Himself? And so it's so powerful when we do that, when we do sing and we praise our God. And it was great to have Bella back on the team this morning. So welcome back, Bella, on the worship team, which is really, really cool. And so do be praying for our worship ministry, and that is a good word. And uh, my goodness, who's had a good week? Yeah, cool, a few hands going up. Excellent. And uh, we've had, of course, a week of uh, celebrations with birthdays happening in our home and and, uh, things going on. So uh, so that's been really, uh, really great. But it's great to be in this celebration this morning, celebrating the goodness of our God. Amen. And so we're going to continue doing that into the Word as we jump back into the series we started a few weeks back called Modern Day Temples. Everyone say temples. Yeah, turn to someone next to you and say, you're a temple. Yeah, uh, okay. So we laid a foundation and some of you might have been here, some of you might not have been. We had Nick uh, last week. It was a great word. Uh, Remember, you can always jump online and check out any previous uh, messages. And so if you missed the foundation message for this series, feel free to jump on to our Facebook. our website and uh, and check that out. And hey, want to welcome those who are watching online. It's great to have you with us this morning. And this word is also for you, all right? So you are in the room and you're a part of this. Amen? Come on, let's welcome everyone who's watching online this morning as well. And so it's so good to be in the room and online together. There is no distance in the Spirit. Amen? And uh, on that note, let's pray as we jump into the Word. Father, we just thank You. Uh, you are so good. Uh, thank You, Lord, that You give us life and life to the full. And that even when this life throws us challenges, um, raises questions, Lord, you are always faithful. You are always consistent. You are a good God. And Lord, we just thank you for your word. Lord, that it is truth. Lord, that in a world of, uh, I don't know, Lord, they talk about misinformation and fake news and Lord, all kinds of stuff that's out there and around there, around us. Father, thank you that your word is always true. And Lord, it brings us freedom and it brings us hope. And Lord, it changes us from the inside out and it renews our mind. And so Lord, as we open your word this morning, God, we ask that you would breathe upon it, that you would speak to us and change us in Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen. Modern day temples is what we're talking about. So like I said, we began this a few weeks back and we laid a little bit of a foundation. In fact, I showed this picture. Uh, This is a picture of the uh, Wailing Wall. Again, I apologise for our rather dim projector. We haven't got our good projector back yet. It's in the fix-it shop. And so be praying for our good projector, please, interceding every day. Uh, But for now, hopefully you can see up on screen there. But that's, of course, in Jerusalem, the Wailing Wall. It's It's a mecca for pilgrimages and a very special place, especially for the Jewish people, because of course, it is the only remains of the original temple. And so they go to this place and stick prayers into the little cracks and things. It's on my bucket list. Has anyone been there? Has anyone been to this wall? No one in this room right now. Well, it's on my bucket list to go. So maybe a few of us need to get together and uh, get over there. But this is, a, this is a Western wall, and it's the only remains of the original temple. Now, we talked about the original temple uh, a few weeks back, about it being such a significant building in human history, because it was the first place that God uh, chose out of any other place on planet Earth to, uh, to attach His personal presence to it, to create a connection point between heaven and earth. Because if you were a believer of God back in the Old Testament, thousands of years back, you wouldn't have known when or where God was going to show up. You know, one day it might be a burning bush over here. There might be a cloud over here, fire from heaven one day. But you never have, like we get to enjoy today, a personal relationship with Jesus. But now with this temple, God said, I am going to attach my name to this place. I'm going to, this is a place where I will be. Now the Jews had a place where, oh, finally we can go to a place where we know that we can find forgiveness for our wrongs. We, we've got a place where we can go and talk to God and He'll hear our prayers. He promised to do that. God is going to be in this place. And so the temple was really, really significant, the, the building back in the, uh, uh, the days uh, of the Old Testament. And, uh, and of course, you know, you might be going, okay, well, Ryan, well, that's, you know, the old temples and stuff, and that's all really neat and everything. But, uh, you know, that temple was torn down, right? It was, it's gone. And in fact, they rebuilt it, and then they tore it down again, and it's been down for a good couple of thousand years now. Uh, it's gone. So why are we talking about temples? Because although the temple is gone, 
the temple principle remains, true? The temple principle remains and we see it because it crosses over from the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, the Jewish people into the New Covenant, into the age of the church, into today. In fact, it says this in 2 Corinthians 6. Here it is. For we are temples of the living God. Everyone say it together. Say, we are temples of the living God. Come on, boom, there it is. So in other words, the original temple might be gone and turned to dust, but the temple principle remains and you and I are it, amen? But the cool thing, we get to carry the presence of God into our world. Now you are the person to which God attaches His, His presence, amen? That you carry into the supermarket wherever you go, that you carry around your home, that you carry uh, as you drive your car, you carry as you walk the streets uh, around the place. You are that point of connection between heaven and earth. Now, instead of people going to a temple to find God, they just need to encounter you, true? This is pretty you know, significant. This is pretty uh, incredible. You are this point. And so... The basis or the, the premise of this message is simply that, therefore, what was true about the original temple, because we carry on the temple principle, so surely what was true about the temple back then is surely true about you and me today, yeah? And so that's what this series is about. We're going to be looking over the next few weeks, and Emma did a great job a couple of weeks ago. Didn't you? Emma did a great job. A couple of weeks ago, talking about our bodies as a temple of the Holy Spirit and the design, because it's the cool thing. Now we don't have to go to one geographic place in Jerusalem. We've got temples, billions of them, millions and billions of them all over the planet right now, yeah? And these temples are equipped with two of these. So we're mobile, no longer stationary in one place. And we come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Just look at you. There's no longer just one design. You know, remember Moses got the design. He had to have so many pomegranates here and this and that. And, but, but now it's many different designs, true? Just have a look around you. I go, yeah. Come on, tell someone you did a good job on them. Yeah. And so we want to look at uh, how the temple principle continues, how modern, as modern day temples, we represent God's original plan for His temple. Are you ready for the first one today? Are you ready? Or if you're taking notes, you're going to want to put this down. The temple was visible. Everyone say visible. You all saw Barry in his high-vis vest, as he, his reflective vest, as you drove in this morning. Well, that's the church we were designed to be visible. The temple was visible. The original temple was visible, and so should we. In other words, the, the, the temple, it could be seen from all around. God did not give designs to Solomon as he built the temple. He did not give designs for an underground bunker with a secret little entrance that only certain holy people get to know about, you know. That's not what he had in mind. He, he created this humongous temple that could be seen from all around. In fact, look up on screen. I've got a photo here of modern day. This is the Temple Mount. And so it's a little blur. It's not high def, but it doesn't matter for my point here. Uh, and you see the, the Dome of the Rock there up on the, the Temple Mount. And that's a picture of modern day uh, Jerusalem and what is there now. But what I want to do, just to show you how significant the uh, original temple, Solomon's temple was, I want to superimpose, I take the, the specs, the designs, and superimpose it on the Temple Mount today to give you an idea of what it would have looked like uh, back in the days. Here it is. Pretty big, isn't it? Come on. You know, come on. Back, back in those days, if you'd come to Jerusalem, no one would be like, oh, you know, isn't there meant to be a temple around here somewhere? Uh, isn't there, you know, no one would have any doubt where the temple was. There it was. It's like the Sky Tower in Auckland, only bigger, you know, it's like, it's massive. I'll give it to you again. There's the Temple Mount today. And this is what the original temple would have looked like. Significant. How many of you know that would have been visible? To everyone around, they would have seen this temple. And it reminds me of what Jesus said about us in Matthew 5. He said this. He said, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Isn't that good? 
Come on, just like the original, come on, the temple is gone, but the temple principle remains. You and I are now the, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And He says, come on, let your light shine. Don't hide under a bowl. Don't kind of, you know, hide behind a keyboard. Don't, you know, come on. We need some submarine Christians to come to the surface, true? Come on, to kind of pop their heads up. You know, we're all going to get a bit scared. You know, people are saying this about Christians and, you know, people think this about Brian Tamaki. So I better not say anything. They might put me in that count. And so we end up kind of, you know, but come on, who knows? We've got the light of the world. Amen. Come on, a time when the world is, is going to custard and there's all kinds of fear and, and division and stuff going on. We get to shine the light of God and His love and His goodness and, and unity in this day. Amen. We're going to be visible and I want to tell you a couple of uh, a couple of stories. I heard this one this week about a, a boy named Jonathan, and this is over in Europe somewhere. And he he had Down syndrome. He's a Down syndrome boy, and and so uh, he he goes to a special school, and and uh, the school was having an outing in the uh, main main city, and so the teacher took all the all the you know all the class there, and and uh, and as they crossed over the, the main road into towards the main square, it was like the city square, maybe in Auckland, like the Aotea Square or something, and. And as they crossed over, uh, this, this Down syndrome boy, uh, 11 years old, named Jonathan, he just started at the top of his lungs just to burst forth in song. And he started singing a song about a tree in my garden that is 100 years old. And the teacher was just kind of standing there astonished. Like she'd never heard him sing this song before, but he just kept singing it over and over about a tree in a garden that is in my garden that is 100 years old. And uh, they just kind of stopped and watched him for a while as he, as he sung. But then from uh, over here somewhere, this, this older lady came up with tears streaming down her face. And she came to the teacher pointing at the boy, at Jonathan, and said, "Why? what is he singing? Why is he singing? And the teacher was just like, I don't know. I have no idea. I've never heard this song in my life. And the, the story came out as the lady shared. She said, uh, since my husband died a number of years ago, I've been incredibly lonely, incredibly depressed. And I got to a point, such a low point this morning. I said, God, is there any point in me actually even, God, even if you're out there? She said, I prayed for the first time. God, if you're even out there, is there any point in me carrying on in this life? And, and she just said to God, look, you know, if there is, I, I need a sign. Anyone asked for a sign before? She said, God, I need a sign. Just desperate. And she said, let me hear the song that I loved as a little girl. Let me hear the song about a tree in my garden that is 100 years old. Little did she know that as she was going about her business in town that day, she would encounter a modern day temple in the form of a Down syndrome 11-year-old boy named Jonathan, whose heart got touched by the Holy Spirit. He loved Jesus, and his heart got just touched by the Holy Spirit, and he just began to let out a song. How many of you know, some of us just need to lose our inhibitions, you know? Come on, Josh, I want to hear you singing, you know, spontaneously. <laughs> no, maybe not. You're right. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Come on, we're to be modern day temples. And it doesn't matter what the outside looks like, true. Come on, the world might look and go, oh, you know, you're not much. You might feel very average. Oh, not very much, you know. I haven't got very big muscles or not very special or good looking. But how many of you know, it's not about the exterior, it's about what's inside the temple. Come on, though we, we have these jars of clay, there is a glory on the inside of you. Amen. Come on, of you. Can I tell you another story? It's a friend of ours um, from our Lifeway days. We used to live up in Snell's Beach, beautiful place. And, and uh, our kids, who just turned 16 and 14, were born up in Snell's Beach. And uh, they went to a daycare. And the lady, who was actually the accountant for the daycare, she worked at that daycare. Her name was Holly. And, uh, and she, uh, was going, she was coming down to Auckland from Snell's Beach, down to Auckland with a group of her friends for, she's in her 20s, late 20s, and for a Christian con- uh, sort of concert or something, she's going to a gig, you know, out for a good time. And, um, and as she was there, she, as they walked into the gig, there was some time to kill before you know, everything sort of started up. And she just felt in her heart, God, I want you to use me. I don't just want to kind of, you know, as Christians, sometimes we can kind of get into just, just receive my bless me mode. God, I want more mode. And we just kind of keep feeding ourselves. And she thought, you know, I want to, I want to bless someone else. I want to be used. And so she just thought, she just stepped outside of the building. And she said, okay, God, you know, do you want me to share with someone? What do you want me to do? She decided to come above the line. And, and, uh, and, she, and it started raining, actually, just, just kind of drizzling, a bit like today. And, and so she took shelter in a, in a little bus shelter, one of those ones with the kind of, you know, walls around the glass things. And, and as she was sitting there, there's a couple of other people there, but, but she felt God just put in her heart, talk to me on your cell phone. And so she, she thought, that's a bit weird. It's kind of a bit kooky, really. 
But she knew better. She thought, no, I'm going to just obey the Holy Spirit. So she got her, her phone out and she, she just began to kind of talk to God. Like, I don't know what she said. Like, hey, God, how's it going? Like, what's with the rain, you know? <laughs> and she just started to talk to God like this. And there was this lady who was sitting next to her. And after a little while of this, she came over. She just sort of grabbed Holly's arm and she said, what are you doing? And Holly felt really stupid in this moment, as you would. And she just said, um, I'm talking to God on my cell phone. <laughs> and the lady just said, don't go anywhere. Stay right where you are. And she just, just took off. And Holly's thinking, that was weird. <laughs> and, but she was told to stay there. So she thought, well, I better just stay here then. And she stayed sitting in this bus shelter. And as she was staying there, she said, God, what is this all about? And she just sort of felt this little word in her heart. How many of you have ever had a word for someone and you feel like it's a really dumb word? You know, it's like, come on, God, give me something better than that. Like, come on, you know, I want to really bless this person. But the word was this, this, just like, your daughter is okay. It's like, okay, your daughter is okay. And so she just sort of sat on that, thought, oh, okay, maybe it's God, maybe it's me, we'll see. And, uh, but the lady came back in a few moments with her husband, and, uh, and she said, tell my husband what you told me. What, what were you doing just now? And, and so Holly says, well, I was talking to God on my, on my cell phone, and and, and, and then she said, and, and look, I, I just feel like I have a, a word for you, maybe for you as a couple. I, I don't even know if you have a daughter, but, but I just felt God wanted to say that, that, that your daughter is okay. She's fine. She's okay. I just felt like God wanted to say that to you. And immediately, poof, the floodgates opened. The tears started streaming down this couple's faces. And again, they started sharing their story and the other side of things. They said, well, you know what? Our daughter, our young uh, teenage daughter, she loved God. She was passionate about God. In fact, she used to talk to God on her cell phone. But then as she got a little bit older, she lost her way. She went off the rails and she, she stopped following God. And she got in with the wrong crowd. And tragically, she died in a car accident. And they said, our hearts are broken. But the thing that really has stuck with us, that we really have struggled over, is we don't know if she's with God. Because she walked away, we didn't know whether she was with God or not, whether she was, in fact, okay. And here was Holly, a modern-day temple, sitting in a bus shelter in Auckland City, saying to this couple, your daughter is okay. How many know that's a significant word all of a sudden? Yeah, come on, give God some glory. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that powerful how God wants to use us modern day temples and sometimes in really amazing ways like that, sometimes in simple ways, making someone a meal, smiling at someone, just sharing your story with somebody. Amen? Just doing these things. In fact, I want to get really practical this morning because we can sort of talk about it and get, oh, wasn't that a wonderful story? Get all excited and motivated and, and then just walk out and go back to normal, kind of submarine Christmas. <laughs> nope, not going out there. <laughs> And so I want to give you something uh, that, that we can actually do this week, that we can put into practice. I'm talking to you online as well, that we can put into practice uh, in order to be more visible temples, modern day temples. Are you ready? Here we go. I'm going to throw them at you. There's four of them. Here's the, here's the first one. How to be more visible. Here we go. Drop bait in conversation. This is a really simple, but just drop bait. We used to, you know, I, I've taken my kids fishing a few times. The sad stories that <laughs> that they are every time. But what we've mostly ever caught was pretty much piper fish. You know, little little sprats, and that's pretty much all we were caught. But you know, it's exciting when you're a little. Hey, Aria, come on, it was exciting. Yes, it was exciting. And uh, we used to catch our little sprats, and sometimes we take a bucket home, you know. And we've got a cat named Cassie, and I know the kids used to love. Because there wasn't really anything else you could do with piper fish, right? You can't like cook them up. <laughs> Be a lean meal right there. But uh, and so so they'd feed them to the cat. But what they'd do is they'd sort of lay them out, you know, one here, and then they'd sort of go a few meters, and they'd put one here, and they'd enjoy watching the cat kind of eat one, and then kind of come to the next one, and then kind of look around and sniff in the air for the next one, and kind of go, just kind of laying little bait. And you know what? We can do the same in our conversation. Just kind of lay little bits of bait. We don't have to kind of come, you know, kind of. I am a Christian. <laughs> You know, here is my Bible. Ah, you know, evolution is wrong. You know. No, no, that's how many know that's not how to do it, right? And, and at the same time, you don't need to be some Billy Graham and have all the gospel lingo down and kind of be some smooth communicator. You just be yourself, amen, because you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. God's anointed you. It's who's on the inside that counts. And so you can just drop things in conversation. In fact, it's a long weekend, right? What's going to happen when you go back to work this week? People are going to say, hey, what did you do for your long weekend? 
And, uh, you know, instead of kind of talking about everything else, why not put church first? So I actually went to church. That was amazing. My goodness, I felt so close to God. Just imagine saying that to those around. I felt so close. to The music was incredible. We got such a great band. You should come to church sometime. Imagine what that would do to people. And you're, not, you're not blasting. You're just dropping bait. They might kind of go, oh, okay, all right, that's interesting. And you can just move on and say, can I borrow your stapler? You know, or whatever. But you're just dropping bait. And, and maybe over morning tea, they're like, oh, so where is this church of yours? And, and, and the conversation carries on. See what I mean? You don't kind of have to give, the, if you haven't given the full gospel, then you haven't witnessed to somebody. No, just drop a little bit of bait. And it, and it might be days, it might be weeks, it might not be until their marriage starts falling apart. They remember that gay was a Christian. I remember her talking about going to church one time on a labor weekend. I need, to, I need someone, she's the only person I know who's in touch with God, who's a connection point to heaven. I need her to pray for me. I need to talk with that lady. Come on. Drop bait in conversation. It's incredible what can happen. You know, maybe share someone else's testimony. We've had a whole bunch of testimonies over the previous weeks of somebody who got a job. Say, man, God answers prayers. Maybe you've got a story. God just did something in your life. Helped you find your keys that morning. I lost them, but then I prayed. And, there they were. It's like, what? Well, could have been God. Might not have been. But I think it was God. Just dropping bait. Dropping bait. Does anyone think that they can do that? Yeah. Doable, right? Drop bait in conversation. Here's number two. You ready? We can be visible online. Visible online. When was the last time you posted something up on your Facebook or Instagram related to your faith, related to God, something just kind of dropping, again, a little bit of bait out there? Maybe it's a Bible verse. Maybe it's a quote. Maybe you know, it's a YouTube thing. Maybe it's even the church post of the Sunday service up on your Facebook for others to see. What an easy way, Right. <laughs> I mean, no one's even going to reject you to your face because you get to hide behind the screen. You can just sort of post stuff up. I know some of you have shared testimonies online, and it's so cool. I love reading it. You know, when you just kind of say, hey, this is who I am, and I'm just a you know, teacher or nurse, or this is what I do, this is a job. But you know what? I love Jesus, and He changed my life 12 years ago, and, and here's why, and this is what happened. And just, just put your testimony out there online, True. And don't get all weird and fill it with Bible verses and kind of, you know, just something simple that might just kind of cause someone to go, oh, you know what, maybe there is a God. You know, in a, in a society today that's telling everyone God's not real and, you know, you just turn to nothing when you die and it's all pointless and hopeless. People are looking for hope, true? And when you start going out there and say, actually, I believe in God. I've met someone who's been resurrected from the dead. What? Yeah, I've shaken hands with someone who was dead, got prayed for, and is alive. Really? It's like, well, that's my story. I'm, it's true. But how many know you can't argue with someone's story, right? You know, because there is no truth. It's all whatever. Your truth is your truth. Share your truth. Amen. Put it out there online. Be visible. And in fact, um, I, it's quite cool. You know, just a few years ago, my mother-in-law came to Christ watching one of our messages online. Yeah. So Eunice, if you're watching, g'day. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Just by posting it up. It's so cool that like when we do go into lockdown, which hopefully never happens again, but when it does, it's incredible the people that just kind of like look in, just sort of appear, what are these weird church people doing? What are they talking about? You know, what kind of weird things are they? And they actually kind of go, oh, this is kind of cool. We've had people join our church because they saw us online and thought, actually, you know, that's, that's pretty decent. It's encouraging. I want, a, I want a piece of that. And they come along. So be visible online. Is this easy? Go home today, post something, just chuck a Bible verse up, pray, God, what's a Bible and just chuck it up, you know, or testimony, whatever. Here we go, number three, Christmas. Put Christ back into Christmas. How many of you know Christmas is coming? Real fast. And it's just around the corner. And, uh, you know, we, can, we have the opportunity to do something related to our faith in Christmas. And in fact, uh, who's heard of the Hope Project? Most of us heard of the Hope Project. Dave Mann doing such a great job of coordinating churches all over the nation to kind of be one voice, to communicate in a, in a society that's kind of no longer really listening for the church. We need to be a, a, a clear voice that's not just, you know, one dude, you know, crying freedom, but it's actually the whole church saying, this is what we believe. This is what we're about. God loves you. And, uh, and so I actually want to play a short video of something really practical again, because I said I want to be practical, how to be a visible temple. I want to play a one minute video of Dave Mann sharing just one thing that I thought, you know what, what if we did this? You know, they're putting it out there to say, hey, Church of New Zealand, here's some ideas of ways that we can put Christ back into Christmas that's not over the top, that's not in your face, but it's there and it's present. And here's a simple thing that we could do together as a church. And so I want him just to share the vision of that very quickly. So hopefully uh, this works for you. So listen up. Kia ora Kitafano. 
Something precious is slowly being taken away from us. Every time a nativity is removed from a shop window or Christmas carols from a community gathering, the true meaning of Christmas is being diminished in the public space. Which is why Hope Project Christmas says, let's all help to keep Christ in Christmas. Let's return nativity imagery to it. We can all give cards with nativity scenes on them, post nativity pictures on Facebook, or have nativity decorations in our homes. Businesses can support too with window displays and traditional Christmas carols on in-store music playlists. And churches can work together through events, hikoi's, group-funded billboards and more. Hope Project Christmas is about a simple idea, that all together we can return the nativity scene and story to Christmas. So what will you do? For free ideas and resources, go to alltogether.co.nz. That's alltogether.co.nz. Come on, how good is that? Yeah, and, and so he left a website there for you. And I thought, you know what? How many people are actually going to walk out and remember that website? And so I thought, you know what? I love the idea. What a simple idea of just putting a Nativity Day cow just up on your window. Ah, some of you might not be your cup of tea. You might want to do something else. But what if you just put a little, little Nativity just in your window, especially if you're on a main road, that when people pass, they go, oh, it's Christmas. Oh, that's right, baby Jesus is involved. And uh, I like those little day cows. They're just kind of nice and white, and there's you know, shepherds and camels, but you could just put baby Jesus in the stable on there. But I thought, you know, I'm going to make it really easy. And so as a church, you know, you can buy these, um, these day cows. And so already as a church, we have just taken the plunge on your behalf and purchased a whole bunch that you can buy from the church for not... Um, the stated price of $25, but for just 20 bucks, if you just sign up here and say, yeah, I want one of those day cows to put on my window this Christmas, just pop your name and that's so let that go around, make sure you, you get that. And uh, say, so, yeah, I want to do that. And maybe you're not on a main road or you're sort of tucked away and think, oh, what's the point? Or you don't want a nativity on your window, that's fine. But if you want to pay 20 bucks and get one of these nativities, we could go to the, the, um, uh, the businesses in the main village and in Waihe and say, hey, as a part of your Christmas, uh, you know, kind of things you put on your window, do you want this, this nativity for free funded by the church to pop on your window? I mean, I can't imagine too many saying no to that. I think that's a great way just to kind of put Jesus, put Christ back into Christmas. Are you with me? Simple. Doable? Yeah. Imagine if people drove, as they drove around Waihe Beach and Waihe, just kind of like, I keep seeing these flipping white nativities in people's windows. What's going on here? You know, we're putting Christ back into Christmas. All right. And, uh, and so really simple. Here's the last, uh, last one I want to leave you with. Last practical thing that we can do is that clipboard goes around is use the seven supernatural words. Am I right, Barry? Come on, Barry uses these all the time. I know Margot, as she has taken mainly meals around to people to, to support people in a hard time, she has used the seven supernatural words. Barry, tell me in your biggest voice, what are the seven supernatural words? Can I pray for you right now? Now, seven supernatural words. They're just seven simple words, but they're supernatural because... As you pray, you actually invite God into a situation. Isn't that cool? Someone shares they're going through a little bit of a hard time. Maybe they've got a bit of a struggle with a son, a daughter, a, a situation, finances, a health situation. And you can just bust out those seven supernatural words. You don't have to kind of give a big theological discussion beforehand. You just say, hey, I'm a Christian. Can I pray for you right now? You know, not when I get home one day or I'll remember you in my prayers, but can I pray for you right now? And do you know what? Anytime I've used that, nine times out of 10, people are actually like, like now, like, okay, that would be really cool. People actually feel blessed. You know, even today, feel blessed that you offered to pray for them, that you care for them enough to pray for them. And again, you don't have to have some big prayer. You just say, hey, you know, God, I was praying for Naomi, that you'd really help her with her exams that are actually all finished now, aren't they? Uh, but the, the results are better than she expected in Jesus' name. Amen. And, and what are you doing? You're just sowing that seed. And now they're going to be watching. And she's going to be watching her exams online. And they're 100%. She's like, yes, God answered my prayers. And he cheated for me. You know, but no, you know, maybe they get healed over the next few days. Maybe the situation turns around. And maybe when you ask them and a few days later, you get the testimony. Look, maybe nothing happens at all. And, but, but you know what? You still open the way for God. You still use the seven supernatural words just to kind of put your faith out there to be a visible modern day temple to glorify God in someone else's life. Is that doable? Come on. 
drop bait in conversation, post something online, put Christ back into Christmas, use the seven supernatural words. If this morning you're kind of going, you know what, God, I'm sick of just being kind of a ho-hum, you know, submarine Christian kind of living amongst, you know, kind of all the bottom feeders here. I want to get to the, ser- I want to put my head up and actually go, you know what, you know, I'm a Christian and I might not be the best. I haven't got it all together, but I want to be bolder with my faith online. I want to put nativities on my window. I just want to share it work and just in the community and actually just drop it in there that I went to church on Sunday and they can do they can deal with it however they like but I'm not gonna hide anymore if you're saying this morning I want to be a visible modern day temple then just stand to your feet right now and we have keyboards uh, going on it'd be great thanks Becca awesome And I'm just thinking of a time that uh, the local dairy just down here, not the four square, but the dairy on the main village. And as I popped in there, I don't know, I was buying something, probably some treat for the kids or something. But the, the Indian dude there, his name was Yogi. We called him Mr. Yogi. And, uh, and he, he had a little sign on the counter. And he said, it says something like, sorry, can't talk, bad toothache. And he was kind of looking real miserable. Like he's normally like a real cheery dude, like a real cheery Indian guy. Hello, how can I help you? You know, but it was like he's not looking very cheery that day. He was just kind of looking like, oh, you know. And I read the sign. I thought, oh, dude, that sucks. Who's had toothache before? It sucks. And 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 I just thought, you know. And there's actually sort of no one else in the queue. And I thought, why not? Bust out the seven supernatural words. Poof, can I pray for you right now? in the dairy, you know, and he was like, okay, and so I, oh, that's all I need, and so I chuck a hand on his shoulder and said, Jesus, you know, will you just heal this toothache in Jesus' name, amen, you know, nothing big and long, but just, just bless you, bro, I hope it just gets a whole lot better and stuff, and uh, actually, I remember we were going away the next day, and when we came back, I remember going to the dairy again, and when he saw me, he was like, Ryan, you won't believe what happened, I had a dentist appointment up in Auckland for the next day, but I never had to go. I cancelled the appointment. My tooth is completely healed. Isn't that awesome? It's like, whoa, come on. I was even surprised. Like, whoa, uh, yeah, of course prayer works. Like, yeah, yeah. (laughs) But you know what? Even if nothing happened, there's a witness sown in there that says, my God is real. My God's alive. He answers prayers. And we'll see what He's going to do here. Amen. Come on, why don't you close your eyes right now. If you need boldness, just put your hands out in front of you. Come on, this is for you online as well. Just close your eyes, put your hands out. Wow. God, when we think of that temple, that picture, Lord, that was huge. There was no mistake in where that old temple was, where God's house was. But God, that house might be gone, but Lord, there's a whole bunch of houses in this room and online right now that are filled with your Holy Spirit that carry around within us this glory, this presence of God. The creator of the universe lives in my heart. God, that that is mind-blowing right there. But God, I thank you for each of these temples right now. God, I pray that you'd come by your Holy Spirit and fill every temple afresh with the wind of your Holy Spirit. God, that it wouldn't be a temple with a sign on the door saying glory departed. But Lord, this would be a church and this would be a people that say the glory of God is here. This is the connection point between heaven and earth. This is the place of the presence of God, the very gateway of heaven. Come to church, come to me and we can go out into the the world and carry this wonderful presence and drop bait in conversations and witness online and put nativities on our windows and put Christ into Christmas and and bust out seven supernatural words. God, Lord, I thank You that You have called us as visible temples. And so now we just ask for boldness in Jesus' Name, that You would fill us with boldness that, uh, Lord, on Tuesday when we go back to work, that we will begin to share, Lord, that we go to church, that we have a faith, Lord, that we begin to pray for those around us. Lord, that even online this afternoon, that we'll post up this message online to say, hey, my church is awesome. You should come sometime, check it out. Lord, that, that we'd find something 
you put something on our heart to post up, Lord, this afternoon. But Lord, fill us with boldness. Fill us with courage that when the enemy comes around and says, no, you can't do that. No one wants to know. No, everyone's just going to be offended and, and, and plant all these seeds of lies and fears in our heart. Lord, we just pray that you would fill us with boldness in those moments. Just say, no, stuff it. I live this life once. I'm going to shine the light of Jesus. Come what may. Lord, may we just shake off the fear of man. Shake off, Lord, that people-pleasing thing. And Lord, be bold, visible temples of the Holy Spirit. (laughs) In Jesus' name. Come, come up here. Come, come up here, Jill. Come, come here. Come here. Jill hardly ever says anything. She's like a mouse in the church, but she's opening her mouth, so we're going to listen. <laughs> no. Uh, I used to play tennis in Newland, and one day one of the ladies came up to me and she said, um, Jill, would you pray for my daughter? And I thought, yes, not a problem. You know, why me? And, that, and she said, because I know you go to church. So I said, well, you can pray too. But I thought, it's always stuck with me. She knew I went to church. And she yeah. said, when in need, her daughter was seriously ill. And she said, would you pray for her? So wow. it must have taken her a lot to come and ask me to do that. Yeah. Mm, so come that. on, come on. Come give Jill a hand. That's awesome. <laughs> See what can come of it, you know. You might go, oh, I told everyone I went to church, but no one kind of cared. And it just kind of went fell flat. Who cares? Might be years later, like Jill. Will you pray for my daughter? But hey, I recognize that maybe you're here today or maybe you're watching online and you're actually going, you know what, I'm not actually totally 100% about my, my relationship with Jesus right now. I need, to, I need to come back to God. Or maybe you've never given your heart to Jesus and you need to receive Him in your life today. It's the best decision you can ever make to receive His salvation, to ask Him to, for forgiveness. And He promises He gives you eternal life. He'll forgive you. He'll bring you into His family and He will bless your life. He will fill you. He will give you purpose and hope. Amen. And you know what? You don't have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops. You can come to Him for the first time or come back to Him through a simple prayer. His arms are wide open. He's a heavenly Father who loves you. Jesus came to reveal what God's like. And He said He's a Father and He loves you. He already knows your need before you ask it. He's just waiting for you to ask. Will you invite Him in? And so I want to invite you right now to pray a simple prayer. Just like my mother-in-law did a few years back, even online. Pray a simple prayer to connect again with God and allow Him to fill you with His Holy Spirit and cause your faith to come alive again. So why don't you just close your eyes wherever you're at. Just close your eyes because this right now, this moment is between you and God, between you and your Creator, your Heavenly Father. And He sees your heart. And it's not about you know, your husband or wife believing. It's not about your mom and dad believing or the background you come from. It's all about this moment and your personal relationship with God. And so I want to invite you to pray a prayer to, say, to invite Him in, to come close to Him, to ask Him to fill your life. But I want you to blank out everything else around. Jesus died on a cross for you. That's how much He loves you. And you can come to Him through a simple prayer right now. Why don't you pray after me? In fact, I want to invite everyone to pray this prayer out loud. But pray it to the Lord right now. Pray, Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. And I thank you for dying for me on the cross. And rising again three days later. Will you forgive me of all my wrongs and wash my heart clean? I'm inviting you into my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I choose to follow you as my Lord and Savior from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, is there anybody, oh dear, is there anybody in this room that just you, that you prayed that prayer for the first time or you used that prayer this morning to really come back to the Lord? Just raise your hand just quickly and say, come on, put your hand up that you're not a submarine Christian. That's what I did. I just did that prayer. I prayed that prayer to the Lord. Is that you this morning who prayed that prayer? Come on. 
Hey, God bless if you use that prayer. Or if you use that prayer online, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to give you a Bible, do whatever we can to encourage you in your walk with God because that's what we're about. And hey, in a moment, we're going to open up the front here for prayer ministry because we do, pray, we do believe in the power of prayer. And if you have a need in your life, um, there's amazing people who've already been praying, who are ready to prophesy over you, who are ready to see you healed, to see your situation change, to stand with you in faith. But uh, just before they come up and we open up for prayer ministry, we're going to finish out in a song. So I want to invite the worship team to come up because we're going to sing, For God So Loved the World. And we're going, to go, we're going to sing it as visible modern day temples that cl- carry the glory of God on the inside of us, the light of God on the inside of us. We're going to sing out this song this morning. Are you with me, church? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, come on. Thank you, Jesus. You're a good God. Thank you that you love us that much. Can we have the prayer ministry team just come on out the front? Just come and make yourselves known. Come and be visible. Come on. Like I said, these guys are here and ready to pray for you for absolutely anything. Even if you just want more of God, or if you just want to know God is real, let them pray for you, uh, you know, and let God touch your life. But Father, we just thank you for all that you've done here this morning. Thank you that you didn't just love us at the cross. You still love us today. And Lord, you want to love the world through us, Father. So Lord, fill us with boldness and Lord, bless each one this week in Jesus' name. Amen. Cool. God bless you. Stick around for tea and coffee uh, or come up for prayer. God bless.